thanks for tuning into this video for watching my channel here we are offshore on another epic adventure we are targeting today grouper grouper season for the gag grouper species east coast is going to close soon october 23rd we wanted to get out and get some before the season closed follow us along on uh, this awesome adventure out diving with mark winneberger augie gregory hunter heverly and jim bar coleman we're out on jim bars parker i believe it's a 28 beautiful boat called the scooter enjoy the video we started our day with a cobia by hunter enjoy the clips here he is look at that thing probably about 40 pound cobia to start our day this was before the sun even came up my turn to drop now and i'm dropping in a similar zone where as to where his cobia was caught looking around for lobster if you watch my channel you know i love looking for lobster nobody was home in this cave <laughs> you can barely see in there it's so dark uh, but this mangrove swam by and i decided to get him for my first fish stone shot always like that had to go uh, retrieve my spear from the rock. I do not want to leave that spear down there. Just causes for more stuff to manage later. Although it's a small fish, this one will eat really good. Back down for another dive. Mixed in with the reef at this spot, there's a whole load of debris. Sometimes it's home for lobsters or different fish. Um, other times it gets caught in your gear, so be careful around this stuff. Now we move spots uh, out to a zone where we catch African pompano just off the reef in the sand. And this was my first drop on the sandy spot. A lot of bait everywhere if you can see in this clip scanning around for my target and I see him right here look at that school wow what a big school place a solid shot right behind the eye of this African pompano and he screams out a bunch of real on I let the fish run as much as it wants until I'm at the surface and once I'm at the surface then I'll be able to put pressure on the fish my priority is getting to the surface reconvening with my dive buddies and then pulling the fish in now these African pompano do put up quite a fight I never want to put too much pressure on them um, but just enough to keep them away from any predators and, and to get them in in a timely manner. If the fish wants to run, I'll let it run, but as soon as I get my hand on it, it's good to go. Brain it, and we bleed it as well. Thank it for its sacrifice. This fish will feed a lot of people. Okay. Okay. That was the biggest one I can see. Hunter now on his African pompano, loading it on the boat. This one patch of sand we were diving was holding them for some reason today. There's Mark going down. And this is what it looks like going down. This was my next chance to go grab a fish. Um, we have no limits on African Pompano where we live, but um, we limit ourselves to one or two per person on a given day. This drop went all the way to the bottom. It's maybe 70 feet or so here. 
scanning around for my target. None found. <laughs> Fast forwarding to my next dive, going down again. Oh, actually, we shifted spots here to a shipwreck. All the bait around the shipwreck is cool. Now on these shipwrecks, we're looking for different species, maybe grouper, kubera snapper, we have been seen here. Maybe a cobia on the shipwreck. This here is small scamp grouper, but not big enough to harvest. No fish taken, but a cool dive nonetheless. <laughs> On my next dive here, I actually go into the pilot house of this ship, which is uh, pretty cool to check out. Some people will actually swim into the ship and swim around, but that's not my cup of tea. It's cool to poke my head in though and, and look around see if anything's lurking. Even if there was a fish in there, I'm not sure if I would have shot it. but. Maybe. Who knows? With uh, nothing on this shipwreck at this point, we decided to go back and check that patch of sand where we were hunting the African pompano before. Going back down again, we find what we're looking for, so back down into the sand. It's odd, normally you'll find fish around structure, but um, this day we were finding all of our fish out in the middle of nowhere, really. Slowly descending, scanning around, there's a school. I don't want to act interested, just enough for them to come closer. Here they come closer grabbed my target and shot and this shot placed slightly better than the shot before putting the fish to sleep I could have gone down and grabbed the fish but I decided just to swim up and pull him up later we hadn't seen any sharks today so I was not worried about any um, any sharks coming for this fish go get him my buddy Mark He's up next, and this is cool. Normally when we get one, uh, we'll, we'll also get a second one, so he goes down and, and gets his fish. Did not need to brain this fish as my spear did that, killed the fish immediately. What a beautiful fish. Thank you. Thank you thank the fish for its sacrifice. Again, th this, these fish are distributed to friends and family and frozen for winter eating and not almost no part of this fish goes to waste. So, Mark, by the time I was finished bleeding and gutting my fish, he has his. And cheers, buddy. <laughs> Just admiring the beauty of these fish, the the colors are, that are on them, the scars that are on their body, the contents of their stomach even when we're gutting them is all a cool part. Yeah, it's a good one. I, I don't know, my other one might be bigger than this. Though. Back down again, I had got my two fish, so I really was not planning on shooting another one, more so just hanging out with this school aiming on them as if I was to shoot them, but 
didn't want to take another one, leave these for another day. Augie Gregory coming up with his, maybe his first, maybe his second African Pompano. Um, we had either one or two per person on our trip today. Then he got a stone shot just like I did. What a sharpshooter. Good job, Augie. Hunter coming up. Unfortunately, no fish. I think he had issues with his shooting line. Hunter, although he didn't have a fish on that dive, he is one of the best divers I know. Now we've switched from our patch of sand to some rocky reef structure. We've switched our target from African pompano to lobster, grouper, snapper, whatever may be home at some of these reefs we go to. This dive scanning around. Apologies if my head movements are too fast for you all, but at this point I haven't seen anything that I would like to harvest, so I'm scanning around trying to see what else is on offer. Small snappers around, but not quite big enough for me to want to shoot into the rocks. Hunter went down and got a grouper. And I went down and was looking for mine. Now there's some decent fish in here, but not the one I want. A couple small grouper, a couple trigger fish around you might see those fish, amberjacks. But when I go down, I really want to harvest a special fish, not just any fish. Except on maybe days that I'm being real desperate. Um, at this point, I've already harvested three fish, so now I'm becoming slightly more picky. putting a timer on this dive so you can hold your breath along with me if you'd like. This was probably the most special dive of the trip. Already can see the, my target on my way down. If you've spotted him already, you've got good eyes, but there he is. A beautiful scamp grouper take my time place the shot the shot landed a little bit higher than I wanted maybe a few centimeters but that's enough for this shot to not be stable the fish is struggling in this cave and all I want to do is get my hand on the fish so I don't put pressure on the shaft and redirect him out now I see the shot is barely in there. If I leave this fish down, it is going to get away, hurt, and harmed. So bring him in, bear hug the fish, and right as I bear hug the fish, my shaft actually falls out, which is crazy. My gun's now on the bottom. But at least I have the fish. 
My buddies are like, what is going on? Where's your gun? Cool, somebody can go get my gun. <laughs> oh my god, that's the craziest shit ever. This fish is pretty special. Yeah, well, they're getting my gun. My gun's on the bottom. I went in, I got him out of the cave with my gun, no spear, I swam up without my gun. <laughs> I know. Hopefully they get it. Yeah, I was hoping for my buddies to get my gun. This fish is special, uh, um, pretty sizable scamp grouper. These ones are hard to shoot. I got it. Thank you. This might be one of my cooler videos that I ever got. Oh, dude, that's sick. Oh, that's a nice one, Chuck. Yeah. This is a big scamp. I, I saw his broom tail on the way down. That size large, son. <laughs> size large. Size large. <laughs> dude. <laughs> have, you ever, have you ever shot a scamp and come up without a gun? No. <laughs> We were freaking out, uh, as you can probably tell. Um, so this this dive is the last dive I have for you guys today before my GoPro ran out of battery. Unfortunately, this my on this video my GoPro was tilted slightly downward, so you can't quite see the fish. But I am going to pause this on some certain frames for you to see what's going on. At this point, I saw a big grouper off to the distance. He was approaching me. Wanted to look down to pause or um, distract him. And I'll pause it right there at the top of the screen. You can see the grouper. He was being a little bit shifty. Went to the, front, to the left, went all the way around to the right. I'll pause it again next time you can see him. Uh, you can't really see him. Sorry, guys, but there was a big grouper. If you can see him there, right there, yeah. And if you can tell, he was being quite shifty. And um, I wanted to catch him, but alas, no dice. I did later in this uh, day get a gag grouper of a similar size to round out my two groupers. <laughs> I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for tuning in. Watch the next video if you'd like.